guys, this is the 1,000th take trying to do this intro. Welcome to Paint with Josh, where we did a 16 by 20 inch black canvas, gorgeous galactic sky, beautiful mountain, bit of soft water, crashing waves, splash, wet, foamy, sandy beach. Oh, it's fantastic. And you obviously think so. That's why you chose to paint this painting, right? Check the description down below. Make sure you find all the colors you need. Get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. We're going to do it just like this. Holy cow, how did I get here? Where did the painting go? What did it look like? You gotta tell me how to repaint it again, right? Let's go through the colors we have today. Dark Sienna, Thalo Green, Sap Green, Bright Red, Cad Yellow, Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White. Okay, we may not use all the colors, but we're gonna make it up as we do all the time right here in front of you and see how it goes, okay? So let's do, we need to put some base color down first. I'm gonna get some of this crimson. We're really gonna pull out a lot of it. Get it nice and thick on the brush. Look at that big, thick amount of crimson up here. And say we got this really bright, kind of reddish crimson sky. All right, anyway, just like we do with our moons, right? We're just laying down these base colors. We've already taken Bob Ross Liquid Clear or linseed oil or baby oil, however you do yours, is just fine, right? A little bit more of that crimson. Maybe we put some of that crimson down here as well. And just stretch it, push it out to the limit. Try to cover the canvas with the crimson, right? Not the same amounts, obviously. Don't have to go all the way to the side or come in from the side or go to the top or stretch out here. It doesn't have to do anything. Just let it be natural, let it flow, right? Let it be a weird kind of shape. And that way we can have this very bright sky into a darker sky and not even have to worry much about it, right? Put some of that crimson down in here as well just into our foreground. Again, not covering all the way to the edges. We don't need it to go all the way to the side. You gotta have some bit of darkness and, and different things in there. And we're not gonna stretch this painting all the way to the edges, right? Pull some of that up, get it up and stretch it as far as we can get it to go. But again, not all the way to the side. Doesn't have to be. Just a whole bunch of crimson all over this canvas, just like that. That's it. All right, painting over. We'll see you guys later. Take care, have a good day, right? Bye-bye. Oh, everybody knows it when that comes. Ba boom <clears throat> All right, let's wash off this brush. Get all that crimsony color out of there into the paint thinner, and then down into the bucket, right? Shake it off into the bucket. Comes out nice and clean and mostly dry, but I do dab it on a paper towel. You gotta dab it. Gotta dab off that color onto a paper towel. Now, why not? Let's just go into it. We don't even need any other base colors for that. Just some crimson on the canvas is all. Okay, I'm gonna put that brush down. We're gonna pick up one of our brand new brushes. So we get our Simply Simmons number six, uh, sorry, number four fan brush. And we're gonna try to throw in some sort of weird little something in here. But I don't want it to just be white and crimson. That's just gonna make it pink and red everywhere, right? We wanna have it go a little crazy, be a little bit yellowy red, orange, kind of a, a sunsetty color onto this black canvas. Yeah, we're just getting that. We're not touching the green or the blue anywhere back there. Just getting a little bit of that, snagging up a little bit of white, just to brighten it up. And then we can always go back and add white, right? So why don't we come in here and we're just gonna start making a few circles just like this. Whoa, look at that color. Holy cow, you guys. That is a fantastic fiery color. Look at that. Holy moly. A little bit of crimson, yellow, red, all to make that. And then we're gonna come in here and make these very, very, uh, sort of firm, I guess. You wanna push it around. So we're spreading it, we're spreading out the light from our, our sunrise or sunset or whatever's happening back here, I love it. My goodness, that is a fantastic little color back there. Woo! All right, the more and more we go over here, the further we can bring these clouds and far off little things. That where the sunlight is trying to reach its way out into the sky, so maybe some down here. Just little areas that get lit up. Not any, not using any extra paint or anything like that. Just kind of grabbing and just letting it deposit its way out there. It's just so we have a little bit of color sort of everywhere, right? Just little differences, little things way off. Maybe there's a little bit of shiny light up there from that same little bit of color. We'll take a little bit of the crimson, a little bit of that, and maybe over here it got a little bit brighter. We're going to let it fade off into that darkness, into that deep, dark black. That's why we're on a black canvas, because we don't want to paint all the black color, right? That is fantastic, though. Why don't we do a little, uh, it just looks so much like a galaxy off back there. We could do like a little bit of a, let's mix it up here. Use that same little color. Going to come in, 
maybe in that brightest area, throw like a little bit of sideways, sideways, a little bit of line like that. Take and just swipe that very softly in the in those same directions to keep that straight line. Very soft, a little bit, almost like it's opening up and then what's gonna come shooting out of it or maybe coming out of it, maybe it could be like an octopus arm or some sort of something. Or we can take a little bit of just dead straight white and put it dead straight coming out of there. Take our brush, let that white section just grow a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't have to be straight. Doesn't have to be anything. I mean, it, it looks better when it's straight, you know, up and down, but our, our bit down here doesn't have to be, is what I meant. There we go. Pull it down into it. You can pull these little things, drag them in different directions. You can sort of create a, a look that you want. It's really neat. Now, some of the times, the more and more you go over it, the more it wants to disappear. So I like to make it just a little bit brighter, pop in just that little extra bit. And that could be the bright dead center of the of the black hole, so we're not gonna stretch that as far. Right? Just like that, a little bit of light coming out. I really like that bit of, of uh, gamma ray burst that's coming out of there. Right? Shooting out, now it's become very large. Take it like that, swipe it up. Very straight, very straight, almost like the galaxy is just opening up. Look, we've even created like a little opening on the side. So we can go back in with that same yellow color and maybe we can open it, kind of make it look rounded. Maybe, we'll see. And again, it's all the same colors so we can take it and blend it out back into that same original color. Look at that, if we can connect these guys and make them look rounded, get that hair out of there. Come over here, make these guys look rounded like they're part of the same thing or we just stretch it out, bam. Just make it look however you like it to look. Whichever way it's coming, make the opposite direction and poof, we got a whole bunch of little stars, or a whole bunch of galaxy back there. Speaking of stars, let's go back with that liquid white into that same color right here. And we'll go in and we'll pop in just a few of these little stars, just off in the distance, very light little things. You don't wanna to touch too hard, it'll become too big. Go back, get some more paint. Don't try to stretch it. Don't try to push and make it. And if you do push and it doesn't happen and nothing comes off your brush, don't try to push harder, right? Little teeny tiny things. Maybe this guy over here will make him bigger and he can be like a, a um, shooting star off in the distance, right? Pop in a few little bright guys over here. Some of these guys up in the top, maybe we'll leave those guys a little bit bigger and we can turn them into their own little far off galaxies way off in the distance, right? A few little dots. Some of them you'll be able to see like this guy, we're gonna have to turn him into a little bit bigger thing now too. And some of them you won't be able to see, right? They'll be such the same color as our galaxy that it'll just be too hard to even see anything, especially like in those little deep dark areas. My goodness, that is gonna be great. This is already one of Josh's favorites. There we go. And I always do more stars than you think you need because you may end up covering a few. So do a few more than you think you need. Look at that. Cool little things. And you can always cover what you don't need at the bottom, so. Man, that is fantastic. All right, let's take our little filbert brush and on those bigger guys, we'll just make them a little softer. Just kind of mess it up. Get that little bit of softness way off in the distance, right? This guy, he was our shooting star. So we'll just pull him up. Oh, way off, we'll have to fix him, right? This guy right here. Just make him soft, a little bit softer. Could be a faraway galaxy. That one up there, another be faraway little galaxy. And then some of those guys, you can get lucky enough where you can literally just take and put a little dot right in the center. And now that's like another faraway little bit that's creating its own little aura, just like this guy, right? So let's, let's redo our, our little um, shooting star. We get our liquid white. That's gonna be the front. We're gonna pull him back and just watch him grow. Okay, not too hard. We're gonna grab the front of it. Let's see if I can't do it over here. Grab the front of it and just softly pull off, straight as you can, right? Come down here. And if you do it quickly, you get that trail way off there. Very nice. You can use your one inch brush too, just to make it softer. All of a sudden, this very far away little thing. 
Fantastically done, very simple. There we go, cool a little bit. So, it's almost like it's shooting out and going across, right? All right, now we need to come up with our, our land. And I was deciding, I was thinking about maybe doing a mountain, maybe doing water, maybe doing both, right? So let's do both. Let's do that. We're gonna grab up our crimsony color right here, snake a little bit of blue without touching our yellow. Go back for that little bit of white, uh, black back there, and really just mix those guys up into this nasty dark color. And that's gonna be our, our mountainous mixture, right? Maybe to even take some of that yellow, throw that in there too. Just because it's gonna brighten it up as we go to pull it out. Now we're gonna grab that, and who knows, maybe we'll come in off the side. All we're really worried about is what the top edge of the mountain looks like and what is it, what that's revealing across the edge, right? So you don't have to have a perfectly straight top mountain, anything like that. You don't want it to get too crazy big either. All right, it's far away thing over there. Maybe it comes up, it gets much bigger on this side. This huge thing just poking up into the galaxy. And we'll come over here and you see how we're covering some of those stars that we left. Even some of the ones that we worked on showed you how to make little galaxies. Sorry, they got covered. If it was a seascape, they would have been visible, but because it's not and it's a landscape, they had to go, right? Just off like that, and we're gonna pull this down, scrape it down, mush it in, turn our knife over, mush it. Get all that paint in there. Get it away from that top edge. And all of a sudden you got this cool little mountain back there. And you take our brush, pull it out to the edge with a little bit of a downward drag. You can see it. it wants to pick up that color that's underneath. All right, pull it down this way. We're working on one mountain at a time. And then you can decide which one sits in front, which one sits behind, right? Maybe this guy, he's just so dang big. He's got to come from the front and just push that other guy right back, right? And you'll be able to tell that when you're painting it. And yours can look a totally different thing. We don't want it to grow too far. That we got to have room for our ocean and stuff. All right, so let's go down here. Our galactic ocean. I made it on a been on sort of a space kick recently, I guess. There we go, very flat at the bottom because we're gonna have that far off water line back there. Poof, just like that, got a really cool mountain. And with all this stuff in here, you could come add another peak or you can add little differences or whatever. It really doesn't matter. If you think it maybe needed a little bit of a flat edge right there, come out and then it goes down, just adds a little bit of depth to it, right? You don't have to save it all. Maybe it comes down a little bit flatter. Right, just so it's not so perfect. Cover up all that stuff in there. Make it a new little section of our mountain. Maybe this bit slides down back and forth before going out. And all of a sudden we've just changed it all on our own. Didn't have to do anything, right? So let's go in, we're gonna grab up that light. Let's get some of that kind of yellowish orangey mixture that we made. That'll be our highlight paint. All right, very much still bright white. It doesn't have to be yellow. We don't want it to be yellow. We can get a little bit of our blue, a little bit of our white and mix that up over here into our shadowy blues, right? That way these two colors will bounce off of each other and it'll look very much like two very bright white things, right? They're very bright in their color. So they're gonna bounce off each other well. So let's say all of our, let's do all of our shadows on the left. Grab up our shadowy side, come down, just bouncing, letting the, trying to, to touch it as lightly as possible. So all this stuff drags off, right? Maybe it comes down here, goes off this side. Now I'm smushing it to try to get all the paint off of the knife because on a black canvas, what do we do? We don't paint the canvas. We're trying not to cover all this black. Very small amounts, very jaggedy, very much just pulling it out very flat to the side. All right, this guy, we'll deal with him later. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna come into that very bright uh, sort of peach color even, very much the same as the sky up here. And go in like that. Ooh, look at that. Just kind of bouncing along the edges. This is where you can change your, your, you know, ridges. Now all of a sudden we've created that whole section and then we'll come down here. It's just a couple little swipes, right? Maybe it starts feeding down. You start to, to see the ski slopes forming. All these little differences, little dark areas that we left in there because you have to leave some of them. Don't want to have it all, right? Can't all, the light can't reach every single wear all the time. So why don't we go over here, we'll get that blue again, put it on the same side. Not a whole lot though, you don't need a whole lot of paint. All right, maybe over here, we start to swipe down in this direction, creating that little gully. All right, and over there, 
maybe that side got high lit and it swipes down over here and they sort of meet in that little shadowy light area back there. See what I mean? All these little cool little things, if you just take the time and not just, you know, swipe it and be done. You can work your mountain. Your mountain is a whole bunch of mixture of, of all these jumbled up, piled up stones, right? So let it work in there like that. That's in that little blue shadowy over here. All these different things you can do. All right, come back, grab up our highlight paint. Over to this side. Oh, man. Come up, leaving our darker areas. Maybe connecting our ridges at certain points. And bringing it over here. Not leaving so much of a dark. Yeah, see that little ridge, that little darkness? All right, taking our bright paint. Going down the side and off to, to forever land over there, right? The more and more you have on here, the thicker it's gonna look. It's gonna change your, your things, but it's also gonna be harder to put further layers on, right? So if you really, look at that shadow that this is casting into this dark area, it's fantastic. But if you, you gotta think about your layers later on in your painting, right? If you have, uh, you wanna put a big tree branch over here, you don't wanna have a whole lot of paint. And your angles are gonna be most important. What's happening with that angle? Right, we don't want to lose all of our shadowing up there. And with our shadow, we almost forgot we need a little bit of like that darker color, that dullness to it. So it's not so bright blue. Right, maybe it comes down just by the, the change of our knife. We can change, you know, the different swipes. So we can change what the land looks like, you know, anywhere. It's fantastic. Fantastic. Not your normal old painting, right? Here we go. We're gonna swipe up in the direction opposite to which we came down. So we came down this way, we're gonna swipe up this way. Almost like if we had our, we should do, we should do somewhere. We have our knife attached to the brush. We swipe down this way and then we'll swipe it up, right? However you did it, go the opposite way. So we have to turn our brush and go this way. And it's not just straight up, it's following those little curves, however you did it, right? Don't worry about the stuff that happens down here. All these little brush marks down here, don't worry about that. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna swipe up very lightly. We're not trying to mush the paint. I don't want it to grow. I'm, I'm barely touching it. You can't even see any light on the edge of the brush here. Just so barely touching it. All right, then we'll come on to this side. We'll swipe it up. Just very lightly. Again, you don't wanna overdo it. You don't wanna overdo it. All right. Take some of that. Really just tapping it to bring the color down. Now on the outside, we're tapping it to make it soft. All right, we can come in here, sort of decide where we want our little foggy areas to be. Mix all that up. Now you can't tell where the mountain starts, stops. We can add all sorts of details in there. You could continue on with your shadowy bit if it got lost. Bringing that down, that same kind of angle, right? Very soft, because we're getting down here towards our where we want our water line to be, so we're gonna make it soft. And it can't be all the same height. You know what I mean? It's not ever gonna be the same, so don't let it be. That looks really cool. That looks neat. Again, I don't wanna have it grow too much on me. So, let's see, maybe there's a bit of flat land connected to that guy over here. And that just fills in that deep, dark space and allows me to see it in my mind what it's going to look like, right? Yeah, just like that. Poof, fill in the rest of that mountain. Now we got this real deep, dark area we can come down to and start to make our, our water or whatever. If we're going to do an ocean in this one, maybe we should have started the mountain a little bit further up, but we're going to fit it in. Let me tell you what. Okay, now remember, we already have all that crimson and stuff that's down underneath. So we just go into our white paint. Same, it's, it's got some of that orangey color on there that we'd created, right? We're gonna come back in and maybe back in here. We're gonna start throwing in our far off bit of straight, sort of straight water line. Not a lot, like maybe one inch because I'm running out of room on this canvas, okay? Don't need a whole lot. We're gonna take that, that same dirty old one inch brush we've been using this entire time we're just gonna flatten it, just push it soft. Look at that, leave some of those light and dark areas in there. You don't have to kill them all. Leave some of them there. You want those in there for sure. Now you got your far off little bit of land and your ocean. Now we can come in, a little bit more white paint, a little bit more of that color. 
All right, and then it's gonna mix in with all those colors underneath, so we don't even really have to worry about it. I wanna take my little bit of ocean line, give it a little place to blend back to. So let's forget about this piece that's right here. All right, blend that until it goes away. We're gonna worry about this dark line that's right back there. That's where we need to finish up to, right? So if we want our wave crashing in the front, it's gotta come up and then it's gotta start to come down. Just like that, right? Now we can feed it back. And then we can see where we wanna keep our line, even bring it down further this way. That way you can go along the top, right? Just like this. Okay, now we have all this blank space to fill in. All that blank, dark area. So we go back to our white. And we go back to that little orangey reddish color. And we mess around and we start pulling back towards that dark line, right? See what I'm doing? Grabbing it from the front, pulling it back, leading it back away from itself, back to that dark line. And that'll be our, our line of water that's kind of coming in to roll and crash, right? And you can go back and make it soft, but you don't want to go too much over and kill all that darkness back there. And then we come with our, our brush, pull it back at the same angles. You don't want to change the angle. You just want to keep it soft. Okay, maybe we put the eye of our wave right in here and let that guy grow. Right, I'm not I'm gonna put too much pressure on the brush because I don't want it to grow and disappear too much. Been losing them recently. Look at the water, oh my goodness. That is a cool bit of eye. But you can see how we're trying to retain that dark line around there? Make sure you really keep that dark line separate. It separates those two bits of color from joining into each other, right? And then we decide the angle of which way we want our wave to go. So let's get a dark brush. We're gonna come in here, we're gonna grab up that darkness just on one corner, right? And then we're gonna flip it over and use the other corner because we don't need the whole brush. Just need the one corner, right? And then we're gonna decide, maybe our water comes in and it starts just bouncing and crashing against all this stuff over here. And then it even hops up and starts to splash even above our water line, like it's bouncing into something over here. Just real messy, all this darkness. And you'll see it as soon as we light it up, right? All this splash and darkness of our wave. That's what you need. You need all that dark in there, right? It's coming down, it's landing right here. So we have our water, our beach, and then our wave starts to grow. So why don't we grab a little bit of that white, a little bit of our liquid white, right? Try to keep this brush from splitting apart on us. Okay, now we're gonna come in and just decide where we want our water line to be. Maybe it's there, right? Just like that. That's gonna be our, our water and our splash and all that stuff. So we'll leave our straight line. Now we can go back in, take our liquid white, mix it in a little bit more with that come up, follow that line with our palette knife, just depositing little bits of paint, different places, different thicknesses, right? You could do this with a palette knife, but a lot of people are, are uh, nervous about it the first time. So use your brush, it's easier. And then we're gonna come in with our two inch brush, grab it and just pull it down. Not real hard, right? We're not trying to pull it all the way off the, uh, the canvas. Just want to pull it down, make it soft, give ourselves this soft reflective water that uh, we can then take a clean dry brush and swipe across, swiping it up into our wave, towards back towards the wave anyway. And all of a sudden you get this very soft little water, soft wet sand, it's fantastic. Okay, now let's grab our, our little liner brush into our liquid white. We're gonna follow along that line again micro liner seems to run out of the liquid white very fast. All right, following along its line, and then you can literally start to take it and pull it back up into the wave. Just like that. All right, the further and further we go, come out here, we can blend that in. The closer we are to the eye, the more of a curve you want to give it, right? The further we start to go out, the more straight they are. So it's not, the water's not curving so much anymore. Over here, it's very much straight out. 
back into our color here since we're losing it. Straight as we go, right? Maybe some of them you can come up, you can be a little bit higher with, but for the most part, the water wants to flatten out over here, right? Even so, you can take that, start to pull it down, and then start to shape it from the top. And obviously, the more we get over here, the more it starts to go backwards first before it grips around. You know what I mean? And then it starts to roll over flat, just like that. That is fantastic. Fantastic, Josh. All right, we get those rounded things and then they all start to flatten out, and meet up at our wave. And we don't wanna overdo it. And that's the worst thing, you can overdo it with these little guys. All right, we're gonna take them, we're gonna do the same little thing, almost like we're making circles, but we're just kind of doing this half. Taking it down to our, our water kind of ripping them up into the thing over here so we can tell the water's curving. Take a bit of our dark color, especially when you get these real heavy bits. Go in down underneath. And now it looks like your foam is resting up on top of something. Like a little lip that it's riding on. The foam's getting sucked back into the water. Okay, why don't we, since we have it, we'll take our, uh, our brush with that liquid white. We'll come in, we'll start to do our, just the corner, right? Just the corner as we dab up, just like we do with our trees. We don't try not to cover everything. Right, and then we go up, start to turn the brush, rotate, make it messy. Bam! The water's crashing onto something and whatever happens over here is just off in the distance, right? Take a couple little dabs of your brush, all sorts of little things. Stuff's flying off shooting off in all different directions. It's fantastic. Like, oh, what's it gonna land on down here? That's the, that's what my eye is looking at. Because where's that water gonna land? Let's grab up some of that color again. We're gonna mix it up just so it's a little bit lighter. Some of that white. And we'll be able to see it a little easier as well. Scrape up here. Now, you know what, that's too much the, the same color of the, of the, the splash and all the foam right here. You can see how it's very much similar. That means we're not going to have any real deep, dark areas to hide all of our shadows. So it's got to be dark. There we go. Even, even with the crimson in there. Fantastic. A little bit of a rock. Got our little bit of beach. Got all of our darkness we can hide on the back side. Right, just bouncing it in, letting that change the color a little bit. Come back with that lighter color. And just add our little differences, our little things, our little adaptations in the stone, little different things. Take it, work it back away from the water. Right, you don't want to pull it too close to our thing. It's going to start to mess up all of our wet sandy lines and all of that. So take that thing away. Now that's what makes all that splash come off of that water, right? But it looks like it needs a friend. He just, he doesn't look happy enough. He needs an old friend. Join him. So we'll get a little bit more blue and black. And this guy, maybe we'll put him as a little bit bigger of a piece of a rock. But again, it's not even going to go to the edge. I want it to be the original bit of dark back there. Okay, I'm going to scrape all that down. It's all connected as one giant big piece now. And this one's a lot more blue than anything else. So when we change that, it's going to affect our, our water, the color of our sandy beach, right? Give a little bit of a shadow back there. Really neat. Okay, why don't we do this one? A little bit of white. We do have our brown, so let's get our brown out, mix that up with our white. Maybe even throw in some of that orange in there. Why not? Just keep it very similar. All we want to do though, little bits. We don't want to cover up all the darkness, right? This is as far away from the light as you can possibly get. So maybe only a few little areas are covered. A few little pieces where you could see. All right, a little bit of darker brown in there, just so it changes it up. It's not just pure black. A bit of dark brown on the back, back here, leading away, changing what our eye sees. A little bit of brightness, a little bit of water, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Now we've got this little rocky beach starting to grow. That's really great. I do want to throw like a giant tree and I know London would kill me. But at least we have to put a little rock over here on the side, finish off our water. What do you think? Oh yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay, let's take this. 
get that over here. I want to save a lot of this guy, especially where he starts rolling over into the thing. So we'll put our rock over here. Just a little small little thing. Boop, boop. It's got to come up. Remember, you always have to cover over some of your favorite parts of your painting. And that helps everything flow together and uh, end up on the beach over here. Always got to make it look funky too. And I like mine to go above the horizon. I just, I'd love it. I don't know. It just sets it off, sets it out there. Get these cool little bits that'll like hang off and be disconnected from your rock. It's kind of cool. All right, fill it in so it's not so much. Bam, 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 bam. All set. Take these guys over here, slide them into our beach, into our water. Pull these guys back and away to cover up all of those things. And then we'll just highlight that. A little bit of our, our dark sienna brown. It just has a little different color and that'll be our darker shadows. It'll make that light brown, make him a bit darker, but still brighter than the rest. See that? We just have these cool little things. They wrap in, some things get highlit more, some are less. You can scrape it up, you can do all sorts of different little jiggles. My paintbrush don't jiggle jiggle, it holds. Right? Different little things, because all it is is just a jumbled up piles of rock on the edge of our little seascape down here, right? You can leave them nice and dark if you wanted to, but I like to highlight them just a little. Makes them stand out. It's real close to us. It's really cool. Really, really cool. Really sort of neat. I have this guy kind of grow out just a little bit more, and then you can't really see what's happening back there. Makes you look, makes you wonder what's happening back here. Got our little bit of water. Then we need to come in, grab up our last little bit of water line, and come in with our second bit of foamy water. All right, gonna come over here. Just like that. Now, take that with our fan brush and very lightly start to slide that back, just like we did up here. Slide that back. Not trying to cover everything, not trying to make it reach the last little bit back here, just to slide it back, that's all. That is literally it. We can take it, see if we can't get a little bit more sheen. All right, swipe it away, swipe it back. Very cool. Now all those little sections in the front Come back in with our, just the back corner. Now we're using the full part of our blade. Put a little bit of foam underneath those. That, that little bit of darkness just helps it sit up. Helps it sit upright and gives a little bit of depth to it. All right, now you got this little chunk of foam that's rolling back in. Looks really cool. I really like that one. Now, before we forget, why don't we add our little three birdies? Do them that same kind of color just so they blend in. They don't stand out super against the sky. Let me grab our mole stick up and let's put them right here off the mountain peak. Off the mountain peak. There we go. Represents myself, my wife, my daughter. They go into every single painting that Paint With Josh does. And you can ask the fans. They yell at me if I forget to put us in the painting. So we're going to come down here, going to go like that. And I hope to see you guys on Sunday for Sunday Seascapes, Friday for Friday Night Freestyles, and every other time that we uh, end up putting paint on the brush and touching it to a canvas. You better be here to watch it, right? You are a Paint With Josh super fan now. I've showed you something really cool. You're like, hey, this dude's on it. I got to learn from him. And uh, yeah, we're going to go on a wicked adventure together. So I have a mountain of brushes to go clean up. Uh, I want to thank you for trying this scene. It's real. It's a whole lot of fun. And, you know, it, it didn't take us that long, really, when you think about it. So the only other thing I can imagine doing would have our, our little ocean line, our water line, be brighter. There we go. All right, now it looks like it's, you can grab some of these guys and, like, pull them down different directions. I right, remember these guys over here, they got to pull them at this rounded angle as the water gets sucked up. Makes them turn and be rolled over and crazy, right? Here we 
go. Just like that, little things. You don't want to do too many though. You do too many and then it's going to lose its effect and then it's not going to be as pretty and you're going to be like, ah, I should have stopped. Or why didn't I stop? And you're going to be mad at yourself. So take it from Josh and uh, don't do too many little things off here on our canvas, right? Don't do them. Just don't. Not too many anyway. All right, well, guys, again, I want to, uh, I got a mountain of brushes to go clean up. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. Thank you for trying this scene and sharing it. And, you know, that's the best way you can support me for free is by sharing. Share the video. Send it to your grandma. Send it to your best friend. Send it to your neighbor who's home with COVID and they're stuck at home or they're laid off and they're looking for something fun and, you know, the TV just doesn't do it for them anymore. Send them to my channel and we'll show them how to paint something really cool just out of our heads, out of the middle of nowhere. And obviously off in the galaxy somewhere. So, uh, until we see you guys again next time, no, that's bright enough. That's fantastic. So, but like I said, until we see you guys again next time, you guys take care. Have the rest of a good day. We'll see you on Sunday, on Friday, on Wednesdays, on Mondays for, uh, July 4th and, uh, do something really patriotic. So I really enjoy seeing all the, the American flag seascapes you guys have been sending in. Please keep doing that video. Please keep sending them in. I'm going to make a giant post about all the people that have done it. It's going to be fantastic. So until we see you guys again next time, for real this time, take care, have the rest of a good day. The whole work, stars, everything, right? It's fantastic. That's why you guys want to paint it. Man, this is going to be a good section of bloopers. How many, how many things? Oh, we just got a new order while we're doing the middle of a video. Cha-ching, baby, cha-ching. Thank you for that. I'm going to go look at it later. So, uh, if you could stop interrupting me for a second, I can finish. All right, all right, man. This is totally going into bloopers. Probably be the very beginning. And then we're going to do one final take. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas and this is the 100th time that we're gonna have to redo it. Oh my God. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today Hi guys, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Crashing waves, soft, wet, sandy beats. It's fantastic. So, you obviously think so. Yeah, you obviously think gorgeous galactic sky with crimson and yellow and white and this beautiful pinkish color. Fantastic mountains, a little bit of ocean, soft, sand, crashy. <sighs> Hi guys, welcome back to Paint. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch black canvas. Just a few colors, crimson, yellow, white, black, blue. That's pretty much it. Hi guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. <laughs> That's Skittles. Skittles on my tongue. I'm not tying or anything, right? Okay. Hey guys, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Fantastic galactic sky with the description down below. Find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on it. We're gonna do it just like this. And stuff. My goodness, it's a mind blower. You obviously think so. That's why you want to paint this painting, right? So check the description down below. Make sure you get paint this painting so check the description down below make find all the colors you need make sure you get your canvas nice and wet get ready to throw some paint on it we're gonna do it just like this gorgeous crashing wave all this splash soft wet sand it turned out fantibly tastic is that a word fantibly tastic it is <laughs> it sure is now right it turned out fantastic. You obviously think so. That's why you want to paint this painting. So check the description down below. Make sure you have all the colors you need. Get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. We're going to do it just like this. That's it, baby. I'm done. Bloopers done. Get me out of town. Can't do it anymore. <sighs>